In the first two problems, we're going to go from decimal form to standard measurement, and from standard measurement to decimal measurement. Let's start on the right-hand side. If we're told we have something that measures 5 feet 8 inches, we want to rewrite it in decimal form. How do we do that? Well, there's officially 5 feet, so 5 decimal. You're writing down everything that I write down. And now I need to take this 8 inches and write it as a partial, a partial. So 8 divided by, ask yourself, how many inches are there in 1 foot? 12. Grab your calculator, please. Taking 8 divided by 12 and writing in 0.6 repeating. So I went from standard measurement to decimal. Now we can reverse that. So we're going to take 0.6 repeating. Please do this with me on the calculator. T type it all out. Put a lots of sixes in. And I can convert from this form back to standard form. How many inches again are there in one foot? 12. So take it times 12. There is your 5 feet and 8 inches. Okay, let's go on to the next side. If I'm given decimal form, 5.83 repeating, and I want to put it into standard form, there is officially 5 feet. Now how many exact inches? We're going to write down this part, 0.83 repeating, put down lots of threes, and ask yourself how many feet are there, excuse me, how many inches are there in one foot? There are 12. There are 12 inches in one foot, so I'm taking 2 divided by 12, and my decimal is 0.16 repeating. Okay, let's go to the next one. If I tell you that we measure something and it is 4.7 feet, and we want to convert it now into standard form, what would this be on your own 30 seconds without to convert here, I know there are 4 feet, and now I need to take this 0.7 and convert it into inches. I know there are 12 inches in 1 foot, so I take 0.7 times 12, and I end up with 8.4. So, 4 feet, 8.4. Mario can run a mile in 5 minutes and 24 seconds, and he is now going to take this recorded mile time, and he's going to turn it into an equivalent decimal. How does he do that? Well, we know he ran the mile in five minutes. Now I need to take this portion, which represents 24 seconds, and write it as a decimal. So ask yourself, how many seconds are in one minute? There are 60 seconds in one minute. Grab your calculator. Taking 24 divided by 60 for this particular problem, and we have 0.4. This is decimal measurement. This would be considered standard measurement. Okay, how could we reverse it? If we're given decimal, the 0.4 is in terms of seconds. So I take 0.4 and ask myself, there is 60 seconds in one minute times 60, and that's how I come up with 5 minutes and 24 seconds. Let's look over here. Now I'm given decimal. I want to convert it into standard measurement. 6 minutes, and now this is a portion of a minute. It's not a whole minute. I ask myself how many seconds are in one minute, the answer is 60, and this is 6 minutes and 36 seconds. Converting from decimal to standard, the automatic is 10 minutes. Now this is more than half, we're not quite up to 11 minutes. So I put the leftover and I ask myself, this is the open blank, how many seconds are in one minute? So times 60, 10 minutes, 40 so this is four minutes. And now this portion I need to represent in terms of seconds. So I put in, if you want to think of it as a leftover or to whatever is to the right of the decimal, and now what do I multiply it by? Well, how many seconds are in the minute? There are 60. Bless you. So this is four minutes and 18 seconds. If you didn't get it right, that's okay. But can you raise it, your hand if you got it right? Just curious. About 60%. Okay. Next, this is maybe a little bit more difficult. Automatically, I know there are six minutes. Now I need to convert this into a decimal. So I know that there are 60, sorry, there are 60 seconds in one minute. So I grab the calculator to turn it into that decimal. 36 divided by 60 is 6.6. .6. 
So we're going to say you went on a really long hike, and you measured the hike using a GPS on your watch. At the very end, it said you went four miles and 2,376 feet. And you're like, well, what does that really mean? Like, did I go four, four and a half miles? Did I, am I almost at five miles? And so we're going to make it into just a decimal measurement. So automatically, I know that I went four miles. And we're going to take this part and write it as a ratio. So I'm always going to write what's given which is 2376 over the basic inversion. We know that one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. You can see this now by me bringing it down. And so this converts into 4.45 miles. Okay, I'm gonna have you try another one. Here we go. Please write this down for me. Okay, on your GPS, it says after two days of hiking, you went 10 miles and 2,956.8 feet. Please convert that into a decimal measurement simply in terms of, let's see, simply in terms of miles. Okay, so I know automatically 10 miles. I take this portion and I know that 5,280 feet is equivalent to one mile and I get 10.5. In each one of these, I am provided with standard measurement, and I want to convert into a decimal measurement. Now, this is where it's tricky, so we're going to go through this slow. The obvious part is, do you see how both say hours? So I know the obvious part is 6 point something. That's the obvious part. Now, this portion needs to represent what part of an hour remains. So I need to take this, and I need to combine it into simply minutes. Like, how do I do that? Well, it's 36 minutes plus there's a portion of a minute. How many seconds are there in one minute? Okay, please write this down in your paper as we go. So I'm going to put this into my calculator. 36 plus 10 divided by 60. That's what's represented by here. Now, to fill this in, we need to ask ourselves, how many minutes are there in an hour? 60, so I divide by 60, and this is what I have. 6, 0, 2, 7, repeating. Difficult stuff. Take notes so you can use it when you do your practice test. I'm going to flip over to the next one. Okay, again, I'm going to circle this part. Here's the simple part, underline hours. I'm provided... In a standard measurement, there are five hours, and when I'm asked for hours down below, you get to bring it right down, five. Now, if you're somebody who gets like a little confused or overwhelmed, then I would tell you, go up and cross it out. We've already used it. Like, don't be overwhelmed with that. How do I combine these? Because the, the mistake I see students make is they go 25 plus 20. Can't do that. We're going to write 25, and this is just a portion of a minute. They're not the same kind of units. How many seconds are there in one minute? Okay, now let's type this into our calculator. 25 plus 20 divided by 60. Now I can't put 0 0.25, 0 0.333. That's representing this part, but how many minutes are there in an hour? Divide this by 60 and whatever I get goes behind the five. I'm going to go through this while students work together. I automatically can see that this is going to bring down the 7. Now, I need to combine these. And so I have 42 in terms of minutes, and then this is a part of a minute. So 50 divided by 60. I'm going to grab my calculator. I go 42 plus 50 divided by 60. Now, this is in terms of minutes. How many minutes are in an hour? I take this number and divide it by 60. 0.71388. Hours and hours, so three point. Now I need to combine this. So I have 10 minutes, and then these are not the same units. Seconds are, are just a small portion of minutes. Well, what portion? There are 60 seconds in one minute. So I'm going to take and go 10 plus 30 divided by 60. That represents the minutes, and how many minutes are there in an hour? 60, so 3.16. So I represented this distance, 3.6 miles, on a graph. 
This is mile one, mile two, and mile three. Now, we have a remaining 0.6 of a mile. So I don't go all the way to 40 or to four miles. I only go 0.6, a little over halfway. I know each one of these miles, one mile is equivalent to 5,280 5, feet. So I noted that here. And then this portion, 0.6 of a mile, I take 0.6 times 5,280, and it equates to 3,168. So I add these all up, and this is what I end up with. We have no decimals, so there's no... I would do it just being lazy, because I, I, I'm a type of person that wants to do the least amount of work as long as I still understand it. I know there's three full miles, so I'm taking 5,280 times three. And I need to add to that that's partial. Well, what's the partial? It's 0 0.6 times 5,280, and I get the exact same amount. You want to draw a picture? You draw it. There's nothing wrong with that. You want to do it like this? Then use this method. Are you ready? With your partner, this is your next problem, and you have one minute. No penalty for wrong. So I know automatically there are two feet. If you're struggling to understand it on the calculator, I'm sorry, I should have put miles here. My fault. This is miles. And this is, this is, sorry, this is feet. I messed up again here, I'm trying to rush. Okay, so I know that there's going to be two miles. So each mile is 5,280 feet. So this is mile number one, and this is mile number two. Now, we can't go all the way to mile number three. We only go 0.4 of this distance. So here's half, it's a little less than that. I need to know what is this measurement in terms of feet. So I take 0.4 times 5,280, and I put 2,112. 2,112. I'm going to add those together. So 5,280 times 2 plus 2,112. And so I get a total of 12,672 feet, and there is no inches removed. Okay, so for this problem, I'm going to convert 2.525 days into hours, minutes, and seconds. So two days is equivalent to two 24-hour periods. I'm putting it down below. I'm then going to cross it out so there's no confusion. Now, 0.525 is like half of a day. If you're somebody who has ever worked and somebody says you're going to work half of a full day, full day is 24-hour shift, you're going to work half of a full day, how, about how many hours are you working? About 12 hours, just so we have some type of a predicted number in mind. So right now, type in point. 525, five, and we're going to take it times. And you're wondering, well, what do we do here? We always work backwards. How many hours are there in one day? So take it times 24. So to this list of hours, how many more hours do I have to add? 12. So 24 plus 24 plus 12. I'm going to do old school elementary math. 8, 9, 10, carry the 1. I have 2, 4, 6. This is 60 hours. Is everybody comfortable with that math so far? But we got a remainder. What's the remainder? That means what's after the decimal? Okay, so I'm going to type in 0. 0.6. And you always work backwards. How many minutes are there in one hour? 60. Times 60. Is there any decimal with the remainder right now? No. So zero. This is really, really difficult. So if you're like, I have no idea what she's doing, you are not alone. Okay, write down this last problem. Go ahead. Notice that this is not the same as this one. Days and hours, they're not exactly the same. So I'm going to start again with this. How many groups of 24 do we have? Three groups of 24. Because each one of these days is 24 hours, and I'm going to cross that out. Point 0.658, that's more than half of a day. So let's type in that remainder, point 0.658. And the really common question I get is like, Miss, I understand the remainder, but how do I know what to multiply it by? You always work backwards. So if I'm trying to fill in this position, work backwards. How many hours is there in one day? Anybody? 24. So take it times 24. So to this list of 24, 24, and 24, what do I have to add? 15. Okay, go ahead and add those up, please. It is 87. Did I make a mistake? No, I'm um, I finished it already.
Uh, there's a point to it at the end of the second. Video. That's okay, yes. Uh -huh. So we have 87 hours, but we have a remainder. So I'm going to type in point seven nine two, and we work backwards. How many minutes is there in one hour? 60. So I have 47 minutes. Oh, we got a remainder. So I have point two. How many seconds is there in a minute? And so this is what the young man was asking. He said, if we have it, a, a remainder right now, do I need to keep going? You can stop right there. Okay. Every, nope, we don't have to go to milliseconds. So everybody should have a piece of paper at this time that was passed out to you.